Round number 10, a Grand Prix Vancouver. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Grand Prix Vancouver 2016. Thanks for making us a part of your Grand Prix Sunday. Vancouver underway. Mexico City underway. Nagoya already in the books. Let's get our draft on with Nixland against John Stern. Nixland is on the left of your screen from eastern Washington. Travel with a bunch of friends to this event just <coughs> across the border in Vancouver. And John Stern on the other side, a winner of a Grand Prix in Atlanta in 2014. Winner of Grand Prix Atlantic City 2013. Marshall, what's going on in the early turns? So <clears throat> it looks like we've got, uh, you know, a, a, cha a color combination on John Stern's side that we didn't see much of in Battle for Zendikar. But with the new set coming out, I think people are going to start exploring around and seeing what's going on. But I'll tell you what. Forest Swamp Snappy Gnarled is not something that John Stern would have been happy with a month ago in a draft. He, he would have avoided this if possible. But as it sits, it looks like he's found a little niche here, and he is this black-green deck. Now, it's not clear exactly what this deck does the best. Back in Battle for Zendikar, it was all about sacrifice. You, you were able to sacrifice creatures for your own benefit, <coughs> excuse me, and you could uh, you know, sort of move your game plan forward that way. Uh, we'll have to see what John's put together here. On the other side of the board, it looks like green-white, which is basically a support deck. Green-white are the two colors that get the most support cards, and they lend themselves to creature curve-outs. Now, the weird thing is that Nick Slind has started off with two creatures you wouldn't expect out of a green-white support deck. He's got a Hedron Crawler and a Warden of Geometry. So <laughs> he's got this sort of green-white colorless thing going on. We'll have to see where he ends up taking that. For those of you wondering, uh, what's that channel <coughs> fireball slash face-to-face -face doing uh, on our scoreboard? Uh, that's just to remind you that... Uh, Whoa! That's, no, sorry. Mm, pause. <laughs> Turn four for our sovereign from Nick Slynn. Well, he has put it right to John here, Hold who has a thought. very pedestrian start with, <laughs> with Nirkana Assassin and Snappy Gnarled, and now he's going to have to find a removal spell almost immediately here. Uh, so uh, I will now finish that, that thought. Uh, that's his team affiliation. That's who he's testing with for the Pro Tour. Um, so, Big team. Uh, yeah, the like 20. 20-ish 20 people, yeah. Uh, here's the Laporte Chain Major for John Stern. Now, at the end of this round, you'll see every pick of John Stern's draft as it came together. I can tell you uh, that he does have a Bone Splinters in his deck. Um, and Randy and I chat a little bit uh, on the commentary of that about, you know, sometimes it's okay to get rid of a medium creature when they have something really good. And here we are. I would happily get rid of my Nakana Assassin or maybe my Snapping Gnarled if it meant getting rid of Felidar Sovereign. So uh, that's where we are here early in day two. A reminder that with just hmm. a, about 2,000 players here, best part of, uh, we think somewhere around 13 and 2 is, is your kind of benchmark for top eight. So plenty of work to do even for these handful, six players in fact, um, had the perfect 9-0 record overnight. Martin Goldman cursed, also undefeated, on 25 points. So we had a draw in there. Yeah, and Shuhei Nakamura uh, ended things up uh, on table one, the first of the eight and ones. So Stern, five mana. So yeah, of course, Sky Climber was the follow-up there for Slyn. Mm. The thing is, I mean, Ooh. John's gone two, ally three, ally four, ally five, uh, the two allies, Zillaport Chain Mage, uh, ah. making them lose two life, and the Malakir Soothsayer paying a life draw a card. Those are both fine, fine abilities. So actually, if you don't look at Slyn's side of the board, this has been fine for John. I yeah. mean, he, this is just super smooth curve. Two, three, four, five. Yeah, and Slyn's not attacking. I mean, he, he does not want to trade his, his Felidar Sovereign off for a couple of dorks over on the other side. And uh, so, so he's just not even going to bother attacking at all here. Yeah, it's going to be core Sky Climber. 
Uh, that uh, yeah. that'll probably there was a, a really subtle little interaction at the, on that last turn too, uh, Rich. That I think was interesting, um, very subtle. So Fertile Thicket hit the battlefield for Slind. He did not use the trigger. Now normally you would use the trigger under all circumstances. You don't have to put a land on top of your library, but okay. you get to order the t the bottom four cards. And while that's extremely unlikely to actually matter, it's free. Mm -hmm. There's just no downside to doing that. Okay. And he didn't. And, you know, I, I got to say, it's kind of, you, you got a question, like, well, why wouldn't you do that? And the, the reason why is because he was just going to cast Natural Connection on end step anyway, so he knew he was going to shuffle his library and it wouldn't matter. Um, just those little tiny things. Now, in this case, that, that's not going to really affect the, the game in a meaningful way, but, like, that's something that John Stern will have taken note of. Oh, he didn't do that. I wonder if he just doesn't know. You know, because he's going to be sussing out his opponent here and figuring out what the deal is. Uh-oh. Counting? Really? Are we counting mana here? He's got a lot. Three, six, seven, eight, nine mana available. Yeah, nine isn't ten. No Desolation oh. Twin. That's a good point. No Desolation <laughs> Twin, no Ulamog, no Kozilek until next turn if he does have that in his hand. Nine mana is just abysmal. Oh, yeah, it's the worst. Who even bothers? Yeah. Skip it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, he did skip, yeah. you know, five and four <laughs> along the yeah. way, too. So. All right, well, it looks like... Uh, I believe with one card left in hand, Slind has decided to attack with the Felidar Sovereign here. Not which least, is because I suspect he wants to use that card. I suspect it's an instant. Um, I have a, a vague feeling it might be Vines of the Recluse, but I may be just making okay. that up. Yeah, he's also but trying to set up, I think, so that if there's a block that's predictable here... It's also because he's only got one card. Mm. He's got Seagate Wreckage. Yeah, oh yeah, so, so he'd he like to get on he empty he anyway. Would, he would like to be empty. Yeah, but what he's also able to do here, although not... Quite? Yeah, no, not quite. So the Malakir Soothsayer changes things a lot, right? And the deal is that John Stern, if Nick doesn't do anything, is going to start drawing cards. And that is going to be really bad for Nick, as he's got a lot of mana and not a lot of action at the moment. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he would like to be able to take down all of the allies. Unfortunately, he's only able to get one. Maybe he could follow up. Yeah, he can. Yeah. And you see he's going to shear drop. Nice play there from Nick. He tempted John into tapping his assassin to use the chain mage because why not? And he set it up to be able to get him <laughs> with the shear drop. That yeah. was a really sweet play from Nick because yeah. now you look at Malakir Soothsayer and uh, she looks a little lonely there. Yes, she does. <laughs> now, you know, that being said, John could just play an ally here and be kind of back in business because the Felidar Sovereign's now gone. And then both players are into uh, bonus card draw mode potentially. Indeed. Seagate Wreckage on one side for Nick Slind and the Malakir Soothsayer. Oh, for John Stern. Elsewhere in the feature match area, Mark Litvak and Florian Koch, Austria and Germany going at it toe to toe at eight and one. Ao Piquet, the runner up from the World Championship finalist in 2004, he lost to Julian Naughton, still the youngest world champion uh, at the time. He was only 14. And. Uh, Paquette, a local Vancouver player. You'll see some of his match, uh, hopefully, on the turbo at the back end oh, of this should round. should see an upkeep activation of the Seagate wreckage here. Oh, he decided not to. I suppose he figures he can play anything from his deck anyway, and if it's a land, he can just activate then. It does take up a big chunk of mana to activate the right. wreckage. Drana's chosen. chosen. And does he have... Oh, he has enough mana as well to activate. Mm-hmm. Though he but would need to, to, to leave back his planes here, which is going to happen anyway. Yeah. I, you know, it's funny because we, we're really hit a nice little stall point here as Nick's able to keep attacking in the air for three, but John has his card draw engine online. Whoop. <laughs> is that the sound effect that's of how, card that's draw? That's how that goes, yeah. Is that like all card draw or just the bonus, hey, look, I get uh, to do this funky that's extra, the card draw. extra card draw? Right, I was going to yeah. say, because. <laughs> You're just like a sound effects machine this yeah, weekend. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. What was the one yesterday? Was it was it a door or something creaking? I, I don't even remember. Yeah, I I've Good tried way. to forget. Players. Yeah. Fair. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll help you along that path and not mention it. <laughs> as a segue, not as a joke. Mm -hmm. uh, you say path. That has reminded me. Cosalite's Pathfinder was a card that uh, paid quite a lot of attention to in the draft because there were plenty floating around, it's common, um, and it was good yesterday. Yeah. Uh, and it's interesting to see, that's the kind of card, because it isn't 
a, a rare and a bomb rare. It's like, how good is a 5-5 five five with a bit of an upside uh, in for, draft? For to me, yeah, to me, it feels like a card that if you can pay attention to how good it is in draft, you've got a pretty good handle on yeah. speed of format, power of format. Um, yeah, I'd call it medium. Right. You know, I'm assuming it doesn't see... I mean, I'm assuming it sees play in draft, but it's not like a go-to pick. Mm -hmm. By the way, uh, right there, main phase unnatural aggression from John Stern to take out Drawn is chosen before any possible activations got online. And... Jiraga Auxiliary. Auxiliary. All right. Well, this is kind of interesting because Nick Slind is going to have to start deciding if he'd rather spend his mana to draw extra cards with the, with the wreckage or if he'd rather dump his mana into the Auxiliary and start getting support going. And I, I don't think it's really clear, to be honest. Um, right now, John Stern is outpacing him on card draw significantly. So he, here's the thing. If you support, and then you keep sending the core Sky Climber in, that actually shuts off the card draw. Because Nick's card draw is free. Seagate Wreckage costs mana, but mm. it's, it doesn't cost life. John's card draw costs life. Sure. So the difference of going 3-3 three, three, as opposed to 4-5... John's going to get shut off of card draw of yeah. the Malachi Soothsayer just on the basis of life. Um, so I mean, the hard part is, is that he's got the netcaster spider there, mm -hmm. and you know that like it, it's going to take a turn before take the a while. Uh, yeah, but it's going to take what? So it's two toughness, three toughness, four toughness, five toughness. He gets he needs to get three plus one plus one mm -hmm. counters on the sky climb that's before it can attack through that that's spider. A lot of time. Yeah, and that's three cards, and I, I see that there's a vines of the recluse in hand for Stern, which which increases that clock even further. God. Yeah, Slyn's in a <laughs> tricky spot. Now, the good news is he has so much mana at this point that he's actually just one land away from being able to activate. I think he can activate the wreckage. Let's see, one, two, three, and the wreckage, and then three, six. Yeah, so he just needs another land to be able to activate the wreckage and the auxiliary here. So that's also an option, just draw another land. Just so you know. Yeah. That card draw sound effect mm. was a B flat. Was it? Yeah. Oh. Around about 456 hertz. All right. I, I just I'm thought you'd like to know. I did, and I'm really glad to know that. Yeah. All right, looks like the Chain Mage is going to rumble here. Because the A, a semitone beneath it, is 440. Just if you're the Berlin Philharmonic. Okay. Under Carrion. But right, all right. That is the only time Herbert von Carrion's <laughs> well, ever been mentioned on a magic stream. <laughs> I guarantee. I, I don't even know who that is. Yeah. A dead conductor. Ah. Well, since he lost his geometries, he did find the land here, and that does open up all the possibilities here for Stern. The problem is he's fallen behind on board somewhat significantly. And he's going to start just attacking here. Remember, he can activate that auxiliary here and make his creatures bigger and just sort of force John to block. I think that this is a strategy that people are going to figure out pretty quickly is that when your opponent's trying to do cohort stuff, if you can force them into combat and just trade creatures with them, it does make it more difficult for them to keep using their cohort abilities. Like right now, John has his Malakir Soothsayer, but it needs a friend. And while he has two of them, the spider doesn't do anything. So, you know, right now he's kind of being pushed in this direction of, well, I, I'd like to enter combat and keep myself alive, but then my card draw engine gets shut off. So that's the kind of decision you want to face, you, you want to make your uh, allies player make. And it looks like John's going to take the opportunity to just take out this Sky Climber, and he's going to go ahead and leave the 3-3 three, three planes on the battlefield, and, and it looks like he's going to take a hit from it as well. Yeah, we've, uh, we've turned into a good one. This to, is beautiful. To open it up. I love this. It's been great. I know a lot of people at home are curious about Booster Draft and how it's going to play out. I think part of the fun of it is that, like, of course we all love card draw and we all love, like, all the presents all the time. So when you get to do something powerful like, you know, like Opportunity, for example, that always feels amazing. But here, there's this, th the flow of the game is this steady drip, drip of extra cards or life gain or life loss. Um... You know, Zadda's Commando activating with Cohort. Ah, one to you. The, the, there's a kind of stateliness almost to it, which means we're able to be on top of it in a way that sometimes things go, I'm a little bit behind, now I'm way ahead, thanks to the game. Yeah. Um, and there's, there's much more of watching it all unfold in this really, not quite slow motion, but it just seems really, really nice paced. And now here we go. We get another yeah. sort of semi-reset. 
I like this uh, from John. You know, he he traded away a bunch of resources here and unfortunately has turned off his Malakir Soothsayer. But the good news is he kept his life total high in case he has another ally. And he made the Jiraga Auxiliary worse. Wow, th this is some powerful stuff now, though. Seagaric gets uh, activated, and he's now able to start drawing extra cards. He's going to be able to do this on his upkeep as well. Unfortunately, all he found was a Loam Larva. It wasn't anything amazing, but he'll take it. All he needs is a couple of creatures plus that auxiliary to really start taking over the game. John needs to find himself another ally quickly to get the cards flowing again with Malakir Soothsayer. And that's an interesting deck building puzzle uh, that, and not just deck building, but while you're drafting, just how many allies do you get? And every time that you take something like a netcaster spider, doesn't have an ally, you are just putting yourself in positions where yeah. this can happen. Same thing with Scion Summoner. Mm -hmm. Four creatures, only one ally. Yeah, John's on the brink here of taking this thing over. Nick looks like he's just content to keep drawing his card here. So we're going to see more support. Yeah, this is shoulder, shoulder to shoulder. Yeah. Shoulder to shoulder. <coughs> Draw a card. Loam Lava gets a bit bigger. Jiraga Auxiliary gets a bit bigger. Mm, keeps finding action. Uh-huh. Is that a Serene Steward? That's a card I've really enjoyed playing. I like that card the last a lot. Format. It is. Not it's doing it's a got enough right to now. activate his wreckage here, too. Yeah, th yeah. Things are really firing for Slind. I mean, this has been a proper attrition fight here. Both players have been able to get their card draw engines online, mm. and both of them have gone pretty deep into their library here. Right, and, as and a it result, looks like Slind's the one who's slightly ahead right now. Yeah, because they've both, they've both done trades and then build up and done trades and build up. It hasn't been a game that's gone two creatures aside, four, six, eight. It's gone four, two, four, two, four. Here we are again, mm -hmm. um, staring off at each other. And still, life total is pretty high. Uh, this is the kind of match where already you have to be starting to think about time. The loser of this game one has a lot of work to do to get it done inside 50 minutes. Yeah, he's really working this wreckage, too. Draws a card on end step. <coughs> draws this card. If he keeps drawing this many cards, he's not going to be able to use it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and unfortunately, he's found two lands in a row, which he's really forced to just play here. He wants to anyway for the auxiliary, but he just needs, like, these are the things he doesn't want to see, right? He just can't get those out of his hand quickly enough to keep the cards yeah. flowing. But it does give him an opportunity to use his Draga auxiliary, and he may be able to, he may be able to just pull far enough ahead now, you know, this turn even, with an activation of that card to just keep the attacks going. So this was a game, remember, which began with a turn four Felidar Sovereign for Nick Slind. Now here's Witness the End. Oh, he's the happy turn. to see that. Nick's like, sweet. <laughs> now I can activate my wreckage and get a real card. He may still just want to put the money, the money, the mana oh. into the auxiliary. Now here's Oren Reef Invoker. Uh, and we have reached the stage of the game where that is not just a 2-2, potentially. Wow, th this is just Nick just that. activated auxiliary and then <laughs> activated the wreck. Right. <laughs> He's doing it. That's Ailey. It is Ailey. We wondered, uh, we, oh. John Stern saw that card and we wondered where Ailey was going to end up. Well, now so we see what the splash <laughs> is for, don't we? Yeah, and so N Nick is now in the happy position uh, because Ailey is all about sacrificing other creatures. Uh, and so there's going to be potentially quite a lot of life gain going on. For one, and sacrifice another creature, you gain life equal to the sacrifice creature's toughness. And check this out, Marshall. Mm -hmm. This is what you think of as the flavor text on Ailey. One white black, oh. sack another creature, exile target non-land permanent, activate this ability only if you have at least 10 life more than your starting life total. Can you say Felidar Sovereign Alien Eternal Pilgrim combo? Oh yeah, no, that he actually <laughs> that's totally true. He has that also with the amount of cards he's drawing and the expendable resources he has, if if this game were to enter some type of a stall out, we could easily see him start sacrificing creatures and start getting to that point. I, I'll tell you what, I've already activated that last ability on Alien this that, format. That should be your new show. 
What's that? Expendable resources. <laughs> you have a you have a new guest every week, <laughs> and they're never allowed back on again. <laughs> I like that. I'm in. I'm into it. All right. So the invoker crunches in and ends up trading for the embodiment of insight here. But again, Nick Slind is perfectly happy with this transaction. Is he's the one who has all this extra card draw going. He's going to draw a card on his main phase this time. Oop. See? It's a sound effect. And unfortunately, he's found himself another uh, forest. I'm glad I've now trained you to the point where you announce that's what they are all by yourself. <laughs> I'm just helping you along, Rich. Just Such a just corrupting <laughs> influence. <laughs> just I'm sorry, everyone. For you. I'm sorry. All right, here comes Stalking Drone. Yeah, more nonsense for Stern. This is just not what he wants to see, not even close. Mm. So Jiraga Auxiliary is, is getting there. Yeah, Nick Slind is, is really pulling away at this point. He's going to be able to play both cards from his hand here. I think that was a relief, Captain Rich. Oh, support three. Yeah, and there's just no way he could die on the crackback. That is exactly what it is. Ugh. Biggest loam larva ever. No attacks? All right. Suddenly everyone's hands went weird there. Went all flappy. Oh, did he? Let's see. I see. So he only has two white sources, it looks like, on the battlefield here. So he's not actually able to activate the auxiliary now. But... We'll have to I just don't think the he free might. card then. Yeah, he'll just have to take his free card. Oh. Poor Nick Slind. <sighs> Daggers. And another chain mage. Look, I, I've, yep. I've been saying that I think the chain mage is underrated, but John Stern, he went for it, man. That's <laughs> a lot of chain mages we've seen this game. Yeah, a reminder that we're going to see every pick of John Stern's draft. So if you're wondering, you know, how do you end up with all these chain mages? Do they all feel right to you? Do they? All, do you? Would you have taken something else? Uh, in the packs where that <laughs> happened. It's going to be really interesting. Uh, I think he just you, drew you'll learn a lot from... Rich. Oh. I think he drew a bailout. Because oh. what he needed was more cards, right? Mm. Yeah, no, I'm excited. I, I yeah. know a lot of people in the chat are super excited about checking out the, uh, the drafts as well. We'll yeah. be showing those in between rounds. A little spoiler for later on. Shuhei Nakamura's draft, which you'll see after round 11. Uh... We arrange with the players that, for the benefit of the viewers at home, they don't just pick the card half a second after they see the pack and windmill slam it onto the table, where we then have 43 and a half seconds to talk about the pick that we think they made as it blew by us. So instead, we, our, our good friends uh, amongst the pros, they will just tap the card that they've decided, yeah, I'm going to go with little, this. Just a little, just tap. A, a little, a little fingernail. Fourth pick of the draft. I won't tell you the card, but Shuhei opens the pack. Within a second, he's like almost punching the card, and it's like tap, 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 tap. This one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one right here. This is one going to pick. Thirty seconds from now, I'm picking this, 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 and it's yeah. That's great. So watch out for that. The back end of round eleven, Shuhei Nakamura. But first, John Stern's draft. He's not winning this game, Rich. I'll tell you that. Okay. So what's happening is, is Nick Slind is now just attacking with basically all available attack attackers outside of the auxiliary. And what he's doing is, is he's setting up a bunch of trades because now that he's drawn that Bayloth Null Rich Drifter. Drifter. Null Drifter. No, I, I'm trying to get you, Null Drifter. Just wanted to roll off the Is that like some time. magic reference? I want, I just like, I want to be at the PT next week and have you just say that and go, oh, God, he got me. Anyway, he's trying to set it up because he's just grinding for pure value here. I mean, this is... You may not I'm, know this, Nick Marshall. Slind, like, may or may not be my hero at this point. Okay. Like, he has, yeah. <laughs> he's drawn, like, he's going to deck himself in, like, a fit of glory. And it's all kind of beautiful. It may shock both you and a lot of viewers to know I'm extraordinarily careful about what I say on air. No, I, yeah, I'm not shocked by that. I, <laughs> I know you too well. Okay, so we see some blocks. A couple of creatures die. The auxiliary gets activated, but wait, there's more. <laughs> Bailoth, no. Drifter. And here he goes. 
digging around, getting more stuff back. And and by stuff, you we know, mean Felada Sovereign. Yeah, that's actually crazy. Uh, he could set up that combo that you the mentioned. Ailey. He easily could. He's got more than enough toughness to get up to 30 before yeah. his upkeep and win the game with Felidar Sovereign. John's at one. Yeah, but style points. This would never work against John Stern, but if you were Nick Slind. <laughs> John Stern, I love it, buddy. He yeah. goes out on his own terms, right. drawing a card. That's how you do it, John Stern. So would you, in that scenario, mm -hmm. where you are so profoundly ahead and you've just played a really long game one and you know that it's probably going to take John Stern a while to win game two, even if he does, would you choose not to win at that point? and just carry on playing the game, grinding towards that Ailey Faladar thing against an opponent who might not quite register that not only Nick Slind, but time is their enemy? <coughs> or would you just finish things there? Because never mind star points. Star points are just, just fun no, no, yeah, that's and Friday night magic. It's a legitimate question. Uh, I mean, my inclination is just to finish things off. Let's just win. Yeah, like, the, the thing is, th this set's new... There's combinations of cards you may not have seen yet. And there are sometimes things that you're like, I did not think about that. And all of a sudden, you're in a bad position. Like, let's say John draws, I don't know, March from the Tomb or something. and gets back three creatures. And right. you're looking at it like, okay, now does this change anything? And maybe it does. And then, you know, all of a sudden, he gets two or three more draw steps. And then he goes, Planar Outburst with Awaken. And you're like, oh, no. And, you know, things start getting out of hand. Now, obviously, John's on you know, green, black, or whatever. But this is the kind of thing that, you know, can get away from you a little, and you, I don't know how you could forgive yourself if you had the win on the table and just thought, you know, let's just sit around for a while longer. Let's just not do that. You know, I think you just go for it. And uh, standing win. up there is Florian Cock, so uh, Cock against the chef is done. The chef. Uh, that's the literal German translation well, of his means, surname? Well, it means cook. Yeah. Yeah. But... I called him the chef at the Super Sunday series, and but the only person I called it to was him directly, and he just smiles every time I say it. There you go. Yeah, the chef. The chef. Getting up out of the kitchen here. He's smiling. See if we can find out who uh, won that match for you uh, as we wait for our game two between John Stern uh, and Nick Slind. Uh, and again, just uh, traveled locally from eastern Washington. Um, quote for, for one of his friends, he is the local limited master. It is not surprising to us that he's doing well, but we are all rooting for him. I bo bo Bold prediction of the day. They're going to be rooting for him until they realize he's made the top eight and it's going to be another six hours before they start driving home. <laughs> <laughs> and then it'll be die. Uh, spoken by somebody who has piled into a car with his friends many times to drive long distances for, for a magic tournament. It is, it is fair to say that of the first, like, 28 friends I had in magic in the UK, none drove a car and owned a car except me. Oh, so you, it was I, all you. I was the PTQ driver. Look, listen, that's why I have the job I have now. Yeah? Of course, because I'd go... 0-2 at my first Magic tournament. Kay. Drop. Watch people play Magic for seven Forever. hours. Ever. Go 1-3. Drop. Watch people play Magic for five hours. Let's watch people play Magic for another 12 hours today. Yeah, it looks like we're already on turn three here. Stalking Drone into Narcana Assassin for Stern. And Pathway Arrows on the other side uh, for Slind. He's decided that uh, there's enough colorless action going on. No. It, no. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the um, reason he has that in his deck is because he's got Ailey. Okay. Yeah, that's the machine gun, right? Right. So you, you put that thing on an Ailey and just start mowing down the competition. Now, he may also have, in fact, I yeah, I do have his deck list here. Let me take a quick look. You know, something like a Malakir Familiar, anything with Death Touch. It's interesting that Smite the Monstrous, which you think of as taking out something enormous, just took out a two-toughness creature, uh, indicates the, the value of uh, the decentness of Zulaport Chain Mage. Mm. Warden of Geometry is here for Nixland, who's at 14, Facing down a 4-4 four, four and a 2-3 uh, that could have uh, Death Touch, theoretically, uh, but right now is just a 2-3. Uh, and the 4-4 four, four Malakir Soothsayer. And because they are both allies, the Soothsayer is online. Right now, though, Stern is not interested in cards. He's interested in making Nick Slim dead. The 2-3 bounces off the 2-3. Four points of damage come through. Here's another 4-power. 
So right now there's 10 power of damage wow. on the table for John Stern. This and Nick Slind better hurry up with the defense. His relief captain, Not great. support one. It does help him stabilize um, here, though. Yes. Like it's going to stop the beats. Yeah, the, the thing is, if John can find a way to get a creature out of the way, he can continue the the beat down. But if he can't, then then Nick has actually stabilized. The, the problem, of course, is that John can just start drawing cards then. Right. Lifespring Druid um, is in hand for John Stern and A.N. Other. Right. It's a spell. So Nick Slind also is running Retreat to Hagra. Uh, the Black Retreat. Yeah, okay. which does give your creature death touch if you landfall. Mm -hmm. It also gives it a power pump. But that's another combo that you can use with the uh, Pathway Arrows. So Nick went a little deep here. Stern will run out Lifespring Druid and pass. Okay. Slind checks his mana. Seer's Lantern. Mm -hmm. Well, I got to tell you, if, if Slind gets out of this one, he, he's going to be pretty happy because he's played multiple cards that don't do much here. The Pathway Arrows right. and the Seer's Lantern don't affect the board in a direct manner, and he is getting beaten down. Now, he has managed to stabilize, but, you know, one Oblivion Strike, and he would have taken a bunch of extra damage that turn, too. So... Yes. And in the meantime, John Stern is sort of seamlessly transitioning into grind mode here as he starts activating Malakir's Soothsayer and getting through a bunch of cards while he can't attack. Okay, Vines of the Reckless. Oh, he's going off. Look at the combo. How about let's, draw a card? Let's do that. Uh, let's do that again. Do you been tempted to the two two life loss? There, he drew, an, he drew another card with the Soothsayer rather than going, now I have another ally, I could tap I would be. Silaport Chain Mage and just put you to eight. I'm a little surprised by that one. Uh, he could have done Chain Mage twice as well. Um, you know, got him down to six and then have him down to four here. I think that that is a totally reasonable line against the green-white cards that you see from Slind as he's not going to have very many ways to disrupt this. Mm -hmm. But if John feels like that's too high risk, which it absolutely could be, then this is totally fine. I mean, look, now he gets to just do it all. Yeah. Like, he's going to hit him down to eight on end step. <laughs> all right, so there goes the uh, Pathway Arrows taking down Life Spring the Druid. Druid. That means that he doesn't get to scry with his Seer's Lantern, though, which which could matter. Oh, there's a Swamp now for, for Slim as well, so we're going to keep an eye on that. And there's that Retreat. Wow, so here we go. Next turn, if he has a land, the combo has been assembled, and he can start mowing down Stern's board. The question is, is it too late? Because right now, Slim's going to eight and could go down to four on John's turn. Yeah, it's going to... Uh, John's going to go ask a question. The last one was very grindy. This one is, is getting tight sort of race-wise. It's like, can Nick Slim stabilize? The, oh, yeah, this has very much became, become a race now because every land... Basically, every land that he draws, he's going to dump two mana into the pathway arrows and kill a creature. So it's, it's land, tap it, tap another land, kill a creature at this point. So John's got a handful here. He, he doesn't get to, to sit around forever now. The thing is, he can finish this game quite quickly if given the chance. So I, he's gone away to ask a question. I'm not sure what he's asking the, the judge. Usually this is a, hey, if my opponent does this and this, does, does this work the way I want it to? Or does does somebody die or, you know, whatever. I mean, potentially, it's a, just a discussion about checking with Pathway Arrows and... Yeah. Again, time ticking down. Yeah, you know, Nixlin went deep, assembled this combo, and it's kind of sweet, and you can see him asking about it. So Pathway Arrows and Retreat to Hagra are what we're talking about. He plays a land, gives his creature Death Touch, and then activates the arrows. I think what John may have been asking is, where does the damage actually come from? You know, is it the creature right. underneath the Pathway Arrows, or is it does it come from the Pathway Arrows itself? Well, pathway but Arrows, it's the creature that has. Exactly. It gives the creature the ability. Right. So that's why that works. So now John's got to try to figure out I think he just drew another Chain Mage. Uh, he has to figure out now, can I just get you dead? Yeah, triple well. Chain Mage on board. And he's going to pass. 
So this lets him set up getting uh, Slind down to four, and then only one Chain Mage dies, and Nick dies. Four so, on top Kaylee. Yeah, so he needs to play a land, do the Pathway Arrows thing, and kill a Chain Mage this turn, or he's going to be dead, or gain life. So here's a land. Trigger. Yep. Give this Death Touch. So that's easy. Crumbling Vestige has He also could draw Ailey, you know, to gain him life. He just needs some other way to get some life gain going. He's going to attack with his uh, with his Warden of Geometries. It has Death Touch anyway. So it's kind of a free attack because he would trade it for basically anything here. Any of the Chain Mages or the Soothsayer. But really he wants to get the Chain Mages off the battlefield. And he's just going to activate the arrows anyway. And you surely let this through if you're stunned because the the worst thing in the world here would be to somehow lose with not enough allies on board. Yeah, I mean, that is the race that, that, that we're looking at here, is that he's put the ball in Nixlin's court in a big way, and he said, look, you have to kill two of these chain mages this turn or you're dead, or gain life. So, yeah, I, I, I think that losing any allies in this case is probably just bad news for you. So this is going to be the pathway arrows. Oh, wow. He's going to kill the Soothsayer, which is going to activate a Chain Mage. And now he's left him with three Chain Mages, so even if he killed another creature, yeah, any ally would it. kill him. So that's not going to do it. Nope. Uh, so John Stern takes it. It's 1-1. One, one. At the far side of the feature match area, you can see even Flock uh, facing towards the camera. He's up against Travis Bowes. Uh, and they are at seven and two. So really, they're in essentially elimination mode here because uh, the third loss just takes you way out of uh, range. M would you um, assume that a, 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 an X and two record would make it at this point? So I, I know we don't know for sure. No, but. Randy's guess yesterday, uh -huh. um, and you know he, he and I have done a whole lot of math over the years, um, is that not everyone on 13 and two is safe. Okay. And, it, and as a result, what that may mean uh, is that, yes, there will be some people who ride off into the sunset uh, in the last round and intentionally draw, uh, but that there will be enough people who are going, I can get, uh, you know, there may be people who feel that they're not safe. Uh, and you'll see a bunch of people play, which will mean a lot of extra people will lose um, and therefore stay uh, on a on a particular mark. I see. Um, so yeah, it's it's very it's very likely that you know all the um, all the twelve twos play. Um, you end up with a ton of twelve threes, and as a result, you have more thirteen and twos because in a smaller field, you go twelve and two in UID to twelve two and one, and thirty seven points is enough. But here, everyone's going to play to get up to thirty nine, which means there could be just too many on thirty nine. Uh, that's that's our best guess. It slightly depends on exactly who turned up um, for day two, uh, just how many people. You know, this is one of the biggest day two fields ever assembled uh, because six and threes are in. Um, you know, an opponent match win percentage. Um, remember, of course, that you know you've now got all these six and threes, and what they do today impacts the opponent match win percentage of all the players who are battling at twelve and three and twelve and two and so on. So, uh, yeah, I would not say that you are reliably safe but in a sense it changes very little okay because if you're at 12 if you're at 13 and you have any matches still to play then you can id i see because above 39 is absolutely safe there's no way you get eight players on 40 or above right and if you're not on 39 points and you've still got matches to play you keep playing matches and keep trying to win them until you get to 39, and then you discover what that means. Right? At, at 11 and 2, am I at 13 wins? No, I better play a match. Oh, now I'm at 12 and 2. Better play a match. Now I'm at 13 and 2. Where do I finish? Ninth. Ah. <laughs> All right. Game three. Let's go. Nick Slynn, Serene Stewart is the first out of the gates. No snapping gnarly for John Stern on turn two, nor stalking drone. Slynn has... Mm. Ailey, Eternal Pilgrim, out of the gates on turn three. And Stern's turn three uh, is Vampire Envoy, the one four. Not looking great here. Whenever it taps, uh, it gains you a life. 
Slin continues oh. to curve out. Relief Captain support two, as it were. So John's going to take three damage but here. In comes uh, the team. And actually, the 1 4 Envoy uh, stacks up pretty nicely at this point. Um, there are all sorts of cards at two and three that would just be fodder at this point, but that's that's already saved John some significant life. It's true. Um, there's the Nakana Assassin. Uh, if he only has three mana, does he only have three mana? If that's the case, he is super in trouble. Way behind. Looks to me like that might be it. Oh no! Don't pass the turn. Play a land, John. I I don't think he's got one. No. Nope. Yeah, he's nope. He's not looking good here. This is bad. This is bad news for for Stern. Slynn's going to play a Hedron Crawler because he's got a uh, Matter Reshaper in his hand that he wants to play next turn. And in comes the team. So John's probably forced to trade off the Nirkana Assassin for the Relief Captain here. And then just block this Rean Steward again with his Vampire Envoy and take three damage. I can tell you a little bit of bonus for European Flan. Uh, European Flans. What is that like? Quiche it's, it's, Lorraine? It's, pr it's pronounced Flan. Flan. The Lotus Alon. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I'll try I, that. I I'll, know what that is. I'll try that link again. Good news for European fans. Uh, even Flock, who was on our, our text coverage table, if you will, uh, we've got him under the lights uh, for his game three. Uh, so uh, every chance that that's where we'll be heading uh, at the end of this one, up against Travis Bowes of the United States. Okay. You a Flan fan? Yeah. I don't think you are. Oh, I mean, if it's... Egg, cheese, and bacon. I mean, they're my basic food groups. That so. is not what flan is. <laughs> yeah, it, it is. No, it's like a custardy dessert with caramel. Oh, no. It. Yeah, dude. No, 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 yeah, no, no, no. It's no. legit. Quiche, Trust me, you flan. wouldn't like it. <laughs> no, I, that sounds terrible. <laughs> All right, so it looks like John does go ahead and trade off here. Though he did end up double blocking and taking a little bit of extra damage. Yeah, this is going to be a quick game potentially here. Okay. Spoiler alert. Hissing Quagmire. First pick of the draft for John oh, Stern. Jeez. Well, he's glad he found it here because he does need to get online, but he is going to fall so far behind. It's kind of crazy. This, this draw from Nick Slynn is so much different than the first one where he kind of did a, some nothings, you know, pathway arrows and that kind of stuff. But here there's Matter Reshaper, and he's just curving out and... Relief captaining in the whole business. Ooh. And Vines of the Recluse. Or Recluse. I don't know. I, as I believe you say. I say Recluse, but I actually yeah. don't know which, which is correct. Well, I, well, mine's correct because it's English. But, you know, I understand <laughs> that you say something else. And that's okay. I don't uh, mind you saying something else. <laughs> wow. I don't. Thank I you. Thank I, think you. I think diversity is cool. Am I supposed to thank you? I can't quite <laughs> figure it out. Yes, I was being gracious. So you may thank of, me. <laughs> vines of Vostwood uh, untaps and blocks. It really just gained him a life and then and then saved him three life. So not, not a great use of the card. It didn't even get to eat a creature. But, hey, John doesn't have a lot of choices here. He's just got to try to maintain his life total as much as possible. For sure. And it seems likely that he kept the three land that he got stuck on. So it didn't feel like, didn't feel like it was a two land keep. Hard to imagine the hand he would have kept with two, given that he didn't have uh, a two drop sitting there. So uh, yeah, basically, he looked at, he looked at three three land four spells, and then just kept drawing spells. So yeah. you know that happens. And he's up to five now. Like, look, can he scratch his way back into this? I mean, Nick Slind. You know, the Mattery Shaper is a very good card, but it's not one of those game-breaking, you know, yeah. board-crunching rares or whatever. It's one that kind of grinds out value, and it's just a 3-2, and then it'll get him some some stuff later. I, You know, 
if John can make a big play and if Nick Slynn's a little out of gas here, then he could be right back in this game. Yeah, John's got a Kozilek's Translator in hand. Five That's mana, a three, good. five. And I mean, that gets in the way of a lot. Into the last few minutes of the round here um, in the feature match area. Well, it's our very first match, so let's not jump to any hasty conclusions. Okay. But we have sat through many day two drafts where all four feature matches are done in 25 minutes. Yes. 2 0, 2 0, 2 1, 2 1, 25 minutes, Ghost Town feature match area. We're coming close to time, and two of our four matches are still going. This does not seem to be super fast. No. It, that would reflect what we saw yesterday as well in the mm -hmm. sealed. Uh, there tended to be a lot of stall outs. This is an interesting spot here for Stern. He's decided instead of playing the translator to play the 4-2 the Zulaport Chain Mage rather than the 3-5. You know, a significantly better blocker. And he's just going to block here. He left that one mana up, which could represent a couple of combat tricks. Vines of Binds of the Recluse, which would be one good way to do it. Oh, this is nasty. Did you see what he just did? Go on. Nick Slind. So what he did is he activated Ailey to sacrifice his uh, Hedron Crawler, mm -hmm. which is life gain. Just one toughness on yep. life gain, but he's going to put a counter now on his Serene Steward. Yep. Sorry, he put the counter not on the Serene Steward. He activated the Serene, Serene Steward, Steward, and he put it on the Matter Reshaper. But still, he got to activate it, it in three. the middle of combat. And now his sheer drop. Good God. Okay. John Stern. Stern's at one. Dying. He is toast. Oh, I think he just drew Bone Splinters, too. <sighs> That's annoying. Uh, so, I, you know, it looked like John was trying to represent maybe a Vines there or an Unnatural Endurance. Mm -hmm. uh, the Vines would have been good there. It, it would have uh, let his Vampire block again. And even uh, eat the matter reshaper at least before the the trick happened there, but he didn't have it, and uh, now he's found himself hugely behind. He's just going to play the Kozilex translator completely Brandon tapped out, but <laughs> and once again, John Stern <laughs> is going to activate his translator on one life and make sure that uh, he does it the way he wants to do it. And uh, Nick Slynn's going to take this match down two games to one. Okay, uh, so matches are still going on in the feature match area, so we are going to get you across town just as soon as we can to show you the live action that is still happening in the feature match area. Uh, looks to us like Ayo Paquette is uh, still going uh, up against uh, Tony Lamb, so I'm presuming that they are in at game three right now. As you see, John Stern uh, just uh, folding away the cards. Oh, and th they, they are just done. So why don't we bring it back to the booth, uh, in fact, because we are just about done. If we can find out who won that match, um, that would be good between Ayo Paquette and Tony Lamb. Um, but we know I that know who won. Nick Slind... Oh, who won? Paquette. Paquette won? Yeah. Sweet. Okay, uh, so Nick Slind is your winner here in round 10 of Grand Prix Vancouver.